starts right now. We begin tonight with the latest on coronavirus cases. Bear County seeing a lower number of COVID-19 cases. However, the death toll continues to increase by double digits for the fifth consecutive day. Right now, there are 42,531 confirmed cases. That's an increase of 232. Sadly, 10 more people have died in the community, bringing the death toll to 432. Meanwhile, 734 people are hospitalized. That's down 36 of those 328 are in the ICU, while 229 remain on ventilators. 15% of staffed hospital beds are available and 52% of ventilators are available. Bear County has continued to see a decline in the hospitalization rate. This graphic here on your screen will give you a better picture of that. Over the last five days, the hospitalization rate has dropped by 115. An early afternoon search for a robbery suspect came to an end this evening. Ricky Green, seen here, is accused of bringing a gun inside a Northside Costco and robbing it. Here's the latest on that investigation. The helicopter was unable to find it along with our quadrants, so hopefully, based on the evidence that we collect, we'll be able to uh, find a suspect uh, soon. That was a case as of noon, but a change of heart from this man, 29-year-old Ricky Green, ended that search this evening. San Antonio police received a call from Live Oak PD saying Green turned himself in and confessed to robbing jewelry from the Costco at Loop 1604 in Hardy Oak. Police say it was his behavior there that put him on the store employee's radar. He went to the, uh, to the jewelry uh, counter and he started smashing glass. He pulled out a, an item to start smashing the glass with. When they tried to stop him, he pulled out a, a, a handgun and started waving it around as, as, uh, as rightfully done that everybody backed off. Green allegedly made off in a getaway car with an undetermined amount of jewelry. An hours long search and one confession later, Green is now spending the night in jail with an aggravated robbery charge. Police are still looking for the getaway driver. The amount of jewelry stolen is unclear. Meanwhile, San Antonio police tonight looking for two suspects accused of robbing a boost mobile store off of South Stars and on the west side. That incident happened around 8 p.m. Police say one of the suspects was armed with a gun. They forced the female employee into the corner of the store, stole from her and then demanded cash from the register. They left on foot with an unknown amount of money. No one was hurt in the incident. Police are hoping surveillance video will help lead to the suspect's arrest. President Donald Trump signing several executive orders today to provide individual relief from the pandemic, including a move to extend a moratorium on evictions for some residents. Yeah, that moratorium had covered about half the rental properties here in San Antonio when it expired July 24th. It was the last of varying layers of eviction protections. That's right. The night team's Gary Berger looks at what dangers struggling renters face. As people have lost their paychecks, there's a fear many could lose their homes through eviction. This prolonged pandemic uh, is affecting our most vulnerable in, in, in so many ways. Both the city and county have programs to help struggling residents pay their rent or mortgage. The city expects to run through its $50 million pot of mostly federal money by late September or early October. Its proposed budget for the upcoming fiscal year includes five and a quarter million of city dollars. But District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino wants to see more, noting federal dollars have restrictions. Uh, we need to contribute our own city uh, dollars, uh, municipal dollars, into a fund like the Risk Mitigation Fund and provide uh, an allowance for direct cash assistance. Local courts had begun hearing eviction cases again in June. But Precinct 2 Justice of the Peace, Robbie Vasquez, one of the five judges who hear Bear County eviction cases, says he stopped pretty soon afterwards because of the pandemic conditions. So for the month of uh, July and this month of August, we're not having any eviction uh, hearings. We've had one cleanup uh, docket in that time. He said from his conversations with the other four JPs, it's a mix of who is hearing cases and who isn't. Either way, hasn't stopped cases from being filed. So a lack of hearings doesn't prevent cases so much as delay them. The court is going to accept any filing that comes in and then makes legal determinations after that fact. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Now, yesterday, Attorney Jen Paxton, Ken Paxton, said local governments do not have the right to change state law to delay or stop evictions for renters. Today, Governor Greg Abbott extending his COVID-19 disaster declaration for all Texas counties. That declaration was originally issued back on March 13th. In a statement today, the governor said in part, quote, renewing this disaster declaration will provide communities with the resources they need to respond to COVID-19. I urge Texans to remain vigilant in our fight against the virus, end quote. 
The Texas Alcohol Beverage Commission is threatening to provoke the licenses of bars who refuse to remain closed. Texas bars have been closed since June 26th. Governor Abbott signed the executive order that forced businesses where 51 percent of their revenue comes from alcohol sales to shut down. The director of TABC says their biggest challenge has been enforcing the order. The director of TABC wrote in an open letter, quote, recently we have spoken with business owners who tell us they do not intend to follow the orders. On that note, I want to remind every member of this industry that it is a privilege to be in the alcohol beverage business in Texas, end quote. Tonight, San Antonio police need your help locating a local teen who disappeared over a week ago. Police are searching for 16 year old Leslie Seja. She was last seen in the 600 block of Willow Street back on July 28th. She is described as five feet tall with brown hair and brown eyes. If you have any information about where she might be, you are asked to contact police. Their number 210-207-7660. The Bear County Jail is free of trash and weeds after six participants of a new BCSO program cleaned it up today. It's all part of the Bear County Gives Back program. Nonviolent offenders are able to do community service hours at the sheriff's office. Participants in the program will work every Saturday for four weeks to avoid jail time. The sheriff says it's a way to accommodate all parties involved. If we are able to keep them out of jail, uh, keep them gainfully employed, uh, but still allow them to pay their debt back to society, it's a win-win for everybody. The new program is an alternate to the work release program that was discontinued when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Be counted. Time is running short to be included in the 2020 census. City officials need you to do your civic duty before it's too late. The 2020 census data collection period will end in September. That's why members of the San Antonio Bear County Complete Count Committee and U.S. Census Bureau were out driving around the east side today. That's where roughly 50 percent of the population has not completed the census. The census takers are never going to ask information, for example, about your social security, about your banking, uh, anything that's personal to you. Uh, they will identify themselves with a badge. So if you haven't responded, please cooperate to give the data. The data determines federal funding for the city. We have information on how to complete the census at KSAT.com. Moms-to-be, listen up. It is World Breastfeeding Week, and those who support it say in this pandemic, there has never been more focus on what breast milk is able to do for the immune system of a baby. After a brief period of uncertainty about COVID-19 and its effect of birth, some positive research is coming to light. Ursula Perry shows us how University Hospital is making sure expecting moms know about the benefits of breastfeeding. It is a mystery. I don't know, but we're certainly seeing it. Lactation specialist Kate McLaughlin is talking about how a disproportionate number of pregnant women are testing positive for COVID-19, most without any symptoms at all. COVID positive mothers whose babies then also tested positive, it was only like two to five percent of the babies. And again, they're not even sure how that transmission occurred. It's one reason why the World Health Organization and the Academy of Pediatrics is now urging even infected mothers to go ahead and breastfeed their babies. University Hospital's new mothers are now allowed to room with their babies after delivery and are encouraged to breastfeed immediately, even if they test positive for coronavirus. And then even for moms whose babies go up to the NICU, we're encouraging them to, we provide them with a hospital grade breast pump and encourage them to pump their milk to be able to still provide breast milk to the baby. In fact, of late, the pandemic has even started a trend of women restarting their breast milk for their older babies to make sure they're getting all the immune benefits. Even though new moms at University Hospital get to room with their babies, there are still some rules in effect, much like our rules. There's a lot of hand washing involved and social distancing anytime that the baby is not getting skin to skin contact with the parents or getting breastfed. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. 
Outside with live cam, 87 degrees, so still plenty warm out there. And a few lucky folks got a little bit of rain this afternoon, and I mean just a little bit of rain. If you don't believe me, I've got the, the pictures to prove some of those showers that were around this afternoon, and we will take a look at those coming up in just a couple of minutes. Our uh, almanac for today, we made it up to 100 this afternoon. It's not wanting to cooperate with me, but we did get up to 100 this afternoon. I think we'll be in a similar spot tomorrow afternoon. We'll talk about what your Sunday has in store and take a look at your full forecast coming up in just a bit. Daphne. All right, Katie, thank you. Tomorrow on GMSA, during our leading essay segment at 8 a.m., we'll be speaking with Alejandra Lopez, the president of San Antonio Alliance of Teacher and Support Personnel. There's still time to submit your questions, so head to leading essay section of KSAT.com and submit your questions. We now have an entire send us your questions section. Still to come, two teens get in trouble after photos and video went viral showing busy hallways as their Georgia schools reopen. Find out how school officials are combating the backlash. Plus, with more than 33,000 COVID-19 cases, Tarrant County officials are worried about the impact of a maskless convention in Fort Worth. See the footage from inside along with what other safety measures were not enforced. Plus, President Donald Trump announcing executive action after Congress fails to pass legislation on additional financial relief for Americans amid the pandemic. Why his new orders will likely face legal challenges next. President Trump signing four executive orders today after talks between his administration and Democrats collapsed yesterday. Those orders will extend federal unemployment benefits for millions of Americans out of work amid the pandemic, which has claimed more than 162,000 lives here in the U.S. Here's ABC's Karina Mitchell with the details. President Trump blaming Democrats after negotiations for a coronavirus relief bill collapsed Friday. Democrats are obstructing all of it. Therefore, I'm taking executive action. We've had it. The president sidestepping Congress, issuing an executive order and three other directives, restarting unemployment benefits, but cutting those weekly checks to $400, 75% to be paid by the federal government. The other 25% must be paid by the states, extending eviction moratoriums, deferring interest on federal student loans, and enacting payroll tax cuts, something opposed by both parties. Through these four actions, my administration will provide immediate and vital relief to Americans struggling in this difficult time. However, the Constitution gives Congress, not the president, control over federal spending. Today's move likely to face legal challenges, especially by cash-strapped states who've shouldered much of the financial burden fighting COVID-19. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer released a joint statement saying in part, quote, these announcements do nothing to increase testing, nothing to reopen schools, nothing to put food on the table for hungry families, nothing to prevent heroes being laid off across state and local government, nothing on many critical needs of the American people. The debate in Washington continues as the U.S. approaches the grim milestone of nearly 5 million coronavirus cases. More than 162,000 have died. As parents and school districts grapple with how to return kids to school safely, concerns over a rare illness linked to COVID-19, multi-system inflammatory syndrome, or MISC, which attacks a child's vital organs. Alarming numbers from the CDC showing the illness has killed at least 10 children and sickened nearly 600 others. Much like the virus itself, MISC is disproportionately impacting Latino and black children, accounting for nearly three quarters of all cases. And health experts say obesity is the most common underlying medical condition. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Taking a look at weather, Katie, it may just be me, but the past few days walking outside, I feel like walking into some hot breath. Today wasn't that bad, but on breath. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> That's a good way to describe it. Um, we had a nice breeze today, and I think that will be true tomorrow as well. So maybe that's why it didn't feel so oppressive out there. And uh, Mother Nature providing us with some shade every now and then in the form of some clouds and a few. And like I said, I mean a few lucky folks saw just a really a few sprinkles for the most part. Here's the view from Woodlawn Lake. Taylor's taking really good pictures for us out there. This is a good visual of what a stray chance of rain means, chance of a stray shower or storm. And a lot of folks sent in pictures of this downpour as it was kind of starting to fall apart uh, earlier this evening. They certainly didn't last long. So here's radar loop going back about four or five hours or so. And you can see those little specks there in far southern Bear County. There was also a downpour uh, up closer to Canyon Lake. There it is blinking 
you would have missed it. They certainly didn't last long, that's for sure. I do think we'll see a very similar scenario tomorrow. Overwhelming majority of us, no rain for your Sunday, but as we get into the heat of the day tomorrow afternoon, whatever can get going down closer to the coast certainly could sneak up closer to the I-10 and I-35 corridors late in the afternoon, early in the evening. So certainly not out of the question that you can see a little stray shower out there tomorrow, but again, the majority of us will just be left with a hot end to the weekend. 87 now at the airport, so in the mid 90s out in Del Rio, low 80s up in the hill country, so still plenty warm and that humidity is building back in as we speak. During the afternoon, we got these dew point numbers down into the mid to upper 60s in a lot of spots, but now they're starting to climb back into the low 70s. So uh, it is plenty humid out there, but that breeze is still hanging tough. We've still got sustained wind speeds between about 10 and 20 miles per hour. So I do think it's that breeze that kept it just from feeling too uh, oppressively muggy out there today. And we're gonna keep the breeze around tomorrow. First part of the day, not so breezy winds about 5 to 10 miles per hour, uh, but by tomorrow afternoon and evening, we'll be looking at winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. So that will keep that um, kind of heavy air moving around just a little bit for us again on your Sunday. 78 your low temperature tonight. We've got mostly clear skies for now. But like the past several days by dawn tomorrow morning, we'll see mostly cloudy skies. So a few hours of mostly cloudy skies to start the day tomorrow. A mix of sun and clouds by lunchtime. That'll be true through the afternoon as well. High temperature tomorrow 100. That's where we were today. I expect we'll be there tomorrow afternoon as well. And then again, just a 10% chance of a stray shower or non severe storm heading into Monday with folks getting back into the groove of work, putting a bit more stress on the power grid. That'll be a CPS energy peak energy demand day. And I actually think we could see a few of those next week as our weather pattern stays hot and rain free. Unfortunately, coming up next half hour, we're going to check on the tropics. Ooh, Katie, look at them triple digits, girl. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Andrew, the uh, Spurs young guns have been looking real good here, but uh, the Spurs really fighting for one of those last playoff spots. That's right. One of the guys that they need the most to perform is Lonnie Walker the fourth. He had a bit of a stumble a couple games ago. He only scored single digits, but he bounced back against Utah. When we come back, we'll tell you why. Plus, since here McCormick talks about the adjustments he's having to deal with with UTSA football and the new safety regulations coming up. Spurs find themselves in a dogfight to qualify for the play-in series between the 8th and the ninth seed. San Antonio needs to win out and get some help if they're going to make the cut. To do that, they're going to need Lonnie Walker IV to continue his stellar play. The young guard has been a major factor in the team's three wins, but he only scored a combined 14 points in San Antonio's back-to-back -back losses against the 76ers and Nuggets. At the time, Lonnie had some family issues to sort out, but as he posted on Twitter on August 5th, Lonnie got the right type of motivation from his father over the phone, and he bounced back with a 14-point performance against the Jazz yesterday afternoon. My father called me, he got up in me, you know, he cursed me out, told me, told me how I was acting, how I look, uh, and that's just all I needed because I know myself, I know my capabilities, um, and God willing, God willingly, you know, everything will fall, fall its course, but I got to understand why I'm here and be grateful for what I'm doing. Next up, Lonnie and the Spurs take on the Pelicans in another critical matchup. That game is tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m., and you can watch it right here on KSAT 12. In the meantime, San Antonio looking to get some help from the Clippers as they take on the ninth-seeded Portland Trailblazers this afternoon. Former Spur Kawhi Leonard has the day off. Tight game late fourth quarter. Landry Shamet finds Patrick Patterson under the rim for the lay-in count it plus the foul. L.A. bench fired up for a three-point play. We're tied at 115. 20 seconds later, Portland counters. Damian Lillard drives to the basket for two of his 22 points. Points. Blazers back up 117-115, but the Clippers answer right back. Rodney Magruder drills the triple with 26 and a half ticks left. L.A. takes a one-point lead, and they would score the final seven points of the game to win it 122 to 117. Meanwhile, the Suns haven't lost a game yet inside the NBA bubble, and they're taking on the Miami Heat tonight. Fourth quarter, Ricky Rubio drives to the lay-in. Suns go up 107-102, and then Devin Booker finds Michael Bridges down low for the slam. Phoenix still up by five. From there, Booker takes over, stepping back and drilling the long two. Booker finishes with the game high 35 points. Phoenix remains undefeated in the bubble. 119-112 is the final. So here's a look at the new Western Conference standings. Only two and a half games separate five teams. The Spurs actually lost grounds because of that Suns win. There's still only two games behind the Grizzlies and a half game behind Portland. But now they're virtually tied with Phoenix, who currently owns the tiebreaker and is the 10th seed. The Spurs are in the 11th spot, a half game ahead of the Pelicans. So tomorrow's game is looking more and more like a must-win situation. 
The UTSA football team got back to work this morning for the second day of fall camp, and they're now roughly a month away from the start of their season. The battle for the starting quarterback position remains the top priority for the team, but there's some comfort with the fact that the offense will again feature running back Sincere McCormick. The former Judson standout racked up over 1,000 yards from scrimmage during his freshman season and tallied nine total touchdowns. And he says that the new safety regulations have taken a little getting used to. Just the whole pandemic, you know, I wasn't in really used to it, you know, I'm like, you know, sometimes you'll forget, I'll forget my mask and, you know, be like, dang, you know, all the stuff that's going around. But um, I felt like our, our coaching staff took the steps, the right steps to, you know, make sure we're safe and healthy and uh, out there on the field, six feet apart, you know, keeping our distance, keeping our mask on and uh, just doing what we have to do. Now, provided there are no changes to the schedule due to the coronavirus pandemic, UTSA will open their season on the road against Texas State on September 12th. Of course, the likelihood that there will be a season is starting to dwindle. This afternoon, the Mid-Athletic Conference announced that they have postponed their entire fall sports season, including football, to the spring. League presidents met Saturday morning and voted unanimously in favor of the postponement. The MAC is the first full FBS conference to make the decision due to the pandemic. MAC Commissioner John Steinbrecher explained that the decision was, quote, not made lightly nor without significant contemplation, close quote. No decision was made with regards to the status of winter sports. And coming up later in sports, new Texan wide receiver Brandon Cooks gives his impression on Deshaun Watson. And SAFC looks to stay undefeated. Got the highlights for you guys coming up. Looking forward to it, Andrew. If you're not worried about the uh, college football season after that Mac announcement, uh, you should be. Yeah, it's not looking good. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> stay with us. Welcome back. A five-day evangelical convention in Fort Worth brought in large crowds with very little regards to CDC health guidelines. A Tarrant County judge is speaking out with disappointment on both the organizers and the attendees. Here's more from the convention. COVID-19! COVID-19! This is televangelist Kenneth Copeland. I blow! I blow. I blow. The wind of God! The wind, the wind of, God. of God! On you! And he seems to be unafraid of COVID-19. And his ministry, it's not afraid to hold a five-day evangelical convention in downtown Fort Worth. Hallelujah! Drawing disappointment from Tarrant County Judge Glenn Whitley. Now is not the time to relax. We have no authority whatsoever when it comes to a religious event. That event is the Southwest Believers Convention. Signs outside ask anyone to affirm that they don't have COVID-19 or symptoms before entering and that they will wear a mask. I said, would that be the look of mischief? He said, that's the one. <laughs> but in many services, it's hard to find any face coverings. Now they may have come in the door wearing them, but they didn't keep them on very long. Friday night, a packed house of students from Kenneth Copeland Bible College graduated. And since these are religious gatherings, they're all protected under Governor Abbott's executive orders. It discounts the danger that uh, people are going through. Pete Evans is from the Trinity Foundation, a watchdog group focusing on televangelism. He thinks the convention is fueled by profit. And they take numerous offerings every day. And I believe they have to keep these conferences up to maintain their donor base and to keep the money flowing in for their jets, for their private jets and for their mansions. In the middle of the night in an emergency. Today was the final day of that convention. Fort Worth has more than 33,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases and 437 deaths. It's a video that's gone viral showing a very crowded school hallway at a Georgia school. Shortly afterwards, two teens who shot the footage were suspended. But now following public outrage, school officials confirmed they rescinded their suspensions. The school district saying in a statement its policy is not to com comment on specific student matters. One of the teens is speaking out saying she shared the photo because she was concerned for everyone's safety. It was worse than I thought it would be because I thought more kids would be wearing masks and I thought social distancing would be attempted in the school, but it wasn't. According to the CDC, over 25% of all confirmed COVID-19 cases are under 30 years of age. Security footage showing the moment a deadly explosion hit a Beirut hospital earlier this week. 
Take a look. Glass can be seen shattering doors and uh, frames ripped right uh, ripped right off of the frames. Maybe we'll see the video. Thousands were injured after Tuesday's explosion tore through the apparently we don't have that video, but it tore through the Lebanese capital, killing more than 150 people and destroying a large portion of that city. Lebanon's officials say the blast originated at a port warehouse where explosives were stored for six years without safety measures. Meanwhile, this morning in Beirut, protesters clashing with law enforcement as the protests got underway. Small groups of young men began throwing rocks at security forces. Riot police then fired tear gas at the protesters. At least four people were hurt in the clashes, according to the Red Cross. The country's ruling class being blamed for incompetence and mismanagement that contributed to Tuesday's explosion. The remains of one of the construction workers killed in the collapse of New Orleans Hard Rock Hotel were recovered today. The hotel construction site collapsed last October, killing three workers. The family of 36-year-old Quinyan Wimberly stood by as a recovery crew removed the body. Teams are still working on recovering the last victim. This has been a long journey, um, but the longest journey has been for the families mostly impacted by this collapse. Again, the teams are still working on recovering the last victim. Still ahead, it is a tax-free weekend and many parents are looking to save on tech as students prepare to remote learn this year. Where you need to shop to save big. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Back to school shopping continuing this weekend for many families. However, this year it looks a lot different with so many kids starting the year logging on and learning from home. Things like laptops top the supply list. Tech is pricey, though, so 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz found some deals that get high marks. Reading, writing, and remote learning. Technology costs more than glue sticks, so families of kids K through 12 are expected to spend more than ever for back to school, an average $789. So we did some homework with Consumer Reports deal hunter, Samantha Gordon. Laptops are obviously the number one most important thing that kids are gonna need. Her recommendations based on performance and price, this Lenovo Yoga, it converts to a tablet, $650 at Best Buy for a $150 sale. Another laptop, the LG Gram 14. This laptop weighs 2.2 pounds. It's one of the lightest uh, laptops you'll find out there, and it has a long battery life. We found it for $947 on Amazon and B&H, $250 savings. Need a new router to handle the load? She says this Netgear Nighthawk is a good one for a mid-sized home. It's $160 at Best Buy and Office Depot, $30 savings. We really like this one because not only does it deliver solid performance, it also has automatic firmware updates, which help keep you protected from cybersecurity threats. A good pair of headphones can be essential. She says the Microsoft Surface noise canceling headphones make the grade now $57 off at Best Buy. And to enhance learning, there's the Google Home Mini Smart Speaker on sale for $29 at Office Depot and Walmart, a $20 savings. You can find that at almost any major retailer for pretty cheap and add a nice little bit of technology to your home learning experience. You can save money on your other back to school purchases like the shoes and notebooks and glue sticks. This weekend is the state's tax free holiday on qualified items. Sorry, laptops aren't included. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Everything going on, I forgot it was tax free weekend. So <laughs> kind of snuck up on us this year. Still 87 degrees at the airport, mostly clear skies. As we head into the overnight hours, though, especially as we get closer to dawn tomorrow morning, those low clouds will be back. So if you want to get out early in the day, take the doggos out for a walk, get a little walk or jog in yourself. We will start off mostly cloudy in the morning. Temperatures in the upper 70s. As we get closer to lunchtime, though, we'll start to see a bit more sunshine. No rain in the forecast tomorrow morning, but plenty of humidity, of course. We've got a pretty much carbon copy day coming up tomorrow. Is there any glimmer of hope in the planning forecast? We'll take a look at that and check on the tropics coming up next. <laughs> you know what? There's not a whole lot to say. Whether it makes us speechless. <laughs>
there is not a whole lot to say. We're getting very creative with our push alerts for the weather app because, yeah, we've got just very typical South Texas summertime weather in place really for the next week or so. I do want to talk about Saharan dust really quickly. Uh, that was a big topic a couple months back. We had that big plume move in. That was the first one of the year, and it really got everyone's attention. Since then, we really haven't had um, that thick of Saharan dust in place. As we get into tomorrow, models bring in a very kind of light batch of this Saharan dust. So I think if you're really paying attention, you may notice things looking a touch on the hazy side at times tomorrow, but then that will continue to filter out as we get into the day Monday. And even after that, we likely haven't seen the last of the Saharan dust. It continues to roll through the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and even the Gulf uh, during the summer months. So we could see that pop back into the forecast every now and then. There has been a pretty steady plume of it coming off of Africa, and that has likely kept things pretty quiet in the Atlantic Basin, at least in the short term. There is a tropical wave coming off of Africa tonight that the National Hurricane Center is watching for development over the next two to five days, but even over the next five days or so, it'll still be out in the open Atlantic. So something to watch. Otherwise, it is quiet out in the Atlantic Basin. We are starting to approach, though, the historical peak of tropical activity in the Atlantic Basin. That's right around September 10th is when historically we see the most activity out in the Atlantic Basin. So that is coming up. We also temperature wise here in San Antonio have hit our peak. 97 is our average high this time of year. Uh, that's as that's as hot as we get after you know we get to the end of August. We're on the downhill trend there. Uh, 87 now at the airport. Dew point is in the low 70s. That number did come down a little bit this afternoon, but now it's back up there. So feeling plenty humid. And uh, here's a look at our high temperatures for today. 100 here in San Antonio. 102 in Del Rio. 102 up in New Braunfels as well. And I do think we'll be back up near the century mark again tomorrow afternoon. As of right now, just shy of 90 degrees in New Braunfels. Still in the mid 90s out in Del Rio. And it's 86 in Catula. So overnight we'll see temperatures fall down generally into the mid to upper 70s. Humid start for you tomorrow morning with those low clouds and then tomorrow afternoon a lot of spots, especially along 35, will be back in the triple digits, mid to upper 90s up in the hill country. Some mid 90s down a bit closer to the coast. And just like what we saw today, there will be slightly better chance of an afternoon shower tomorrow as you get down southeast of San Antonio. So we'll watch the sea breeze tomorrow afternoon, see what we can get going. But models do suggest that kind of like today, we'll see some stray thunder showers try to drift closer to the I-35 corridor late tomorrow afternoon into the early evening hours. So that's why we'll leave in just a 10% chance of a stray thunder shower for you tomorrow. But like what some of you captured today, keep in mind you can see um, some sites like this out there late in the afternoon, early in the evening hours tomorrow, but most folks missing out on the rain. So why is our weather just so unfortunately hot and unfortunately rain free? Well, the heat high is still kind of parked over Texas. Models do start to take it off to the west um, a little bit by the middle part of next week, but unfortunately I don't think it's going to move far enough away for us to really get anything going. So that's why you'll see more triple digits and unfortunately a lack of rainfall in the forecast. Monday with everybody getting back kind of on the power grid using electronics more because of work and everything. Uh, that'll be a CPS energy peak energy demand day. You'll be encouraged to limit your power use between 3 and 7 p.m. And I think we could even see a couple more of those next week. And of course, we'll keep you updated on that here on our newscast. Yeah, Guys. might want to take advantage of some bodies of water, huh? Find one. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. All right, Andrew, my Cleveland Browns go through coaches like most people change their <laughs> underwear. It's been a while since the Cowboys have had to go through a new coach. Yeah, that's right. And Mike McCarthy has a lot of tweaking to do. He's kept most things the same, but when we come back, he's going to talk a little bit about the offense and his comments on whether he believes to Amari Cooper's belief that three wide receivers could top 1,000 yards this season. Plus, San Antonio FC tries to stay unbeaten. We've got the results coming up. Just trying to anticipate the way it was going to unfold um, uh, was dead wrong on a number of fronts. So th there's just a number. I I'd say we had six or seven plans just in the course of the three weeks leading up to it. Mike McCarthy has had a lot of variables and moving parts to deal with in his first season as Cowboys head coach in Big Board Sports.
Dallas Cowboys had one of the best offenses in the NFL last season, at least statistically, and with the addition of rookie wide receiver C.D. Lamb from this year's NFL draft, quarterback Dak Prescott has a bevy of young talent to work with. Amari Cooper made headlines earlier this week when he said he believed that Dallas should finish the season with three 1,000-yard wide receivers, meaning Cooper, Lamb, and Michael Gallup. But with all pro running back Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield needing his own fair share of touches, what does new head coach Mike McCarthy think about Cooper's belief? I love the way he thinks, and, and, and I think you want, and you want Zeke to feel the same way because at the end of the day, it's about ball distribution. I mean, that'll, that's always an emphasis, um, the, the ability to get the football spread around because we're going we're to need, need all of our perimeter players when it comes to touches, so that's really where my focus is. McCarthy has been very complimentary to offensive coordinator Kellen Moore so far, saying that his presence has been critical to the new head coach's translation to Dallas's offensive schemes. Meanwhile, Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson is still grappling with the loss of his number one target, DeAndre Hopkins, this offseason. In order to fill the void, Houston acquired running back David Johnson and a pair of wide receivers, former Cowboy Randall Cobb and former Ram Brandon Cooks. The new look offense has spent some time training together prior to the reporting training camp. So what's Cooks' first impression of Watson? Watching film and just, you know, getting in person like, man, this guy throws a, a beautiful deep ball on, on the film. But is it is it like that, you know, in real life? And, um, you know, that was definitely the case. You know, it, it's so effortless. His, his talent is is out of this world. It's, you know, when he's throwing the ball, it, it just seems like it's so easy. So to be able to match that up with watching film was uh, incredible to see in person. Running back David Johnson agrees with Cook's assessment, even saying that Watson talks about the playbook as if he wrote it himself. It has been a rough start to the season for the Astros. Houston on the road taking on the AL West leading A's this afternoon. Oakland in control up by two in the bottom of the eighth. Matt Chapman puts a charge into right center and that's going to sail on out of here. A solo shot puts the A's up three to one. Houston trying to mount a comeback though in the top of the ninth here. One on Alex Bregman drives home Kyle Tucker with an RBI single to left. But that's their only run of the day. Astros fall 3-1. to one. Their record drops to 6-8 and eight on the season. In the Lone Star State, Rangers taking on the Angels, trying to keep pace with the rest of the division. Scoreless game, bottom of the six, not anymore. Joey Gallo smokes one deep to left. Goodbye baseball. That's a two-run blast. And that's all the offense Texas needs. Rangers go on to win 2-0. to nothing. They improve to 5-8 and eight overall. San Antonio FC looking to stay unbeaten on the road tonight against OKC Energy FC. And once again, the Alamo City Club gets on the board first. 31st minute, Christian Pirano buries a rebound into the back of the net. San Antonio goes up 1-0. It's Pirano's third goal of the season. He would tally an assist in the second half. And San Antonio adds two more goals in the second half to win it 3-0. They just keep on winning. They now have three po 13 points in Group D. They're five points ahead against FC Tulsa. They will face Tulsa on Wednesday. Quick turnaround here, four days over removed from the next match. We'll see how they do. Good for them, Andrew. You mentioned the Astros struggles. I call that karma. <laughs> what can I say? I don't know what to say to that. Bang the garbage can a couple more times. See if it helps. Bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> Up next. It was a car parade celebrating more than 80 years of service. We'll introduce you to the military vet celebrating nearly a century of life. All right, it's the time of the show where we like to end things on a good note. That's right. We got something good for you. One Houston neighborhood celebrated the life of the oldest living Marine in Texas by surprising him with a car parade. Joseph Colwell turned 99 on Friday. He enlisted in 1942 and served during World War II. The military veteran became a police officer, then a firefighter, then worked and retired from the U.S. Postal Service. Colwell says this is a birthday surprise he'll never forget. This is unbelievable, unbelievable for a, a man that doesn't believe in parties on birthdays. Uh, and I try to avoid them as much as I possibly can. And then to have something like this uh, happen, uh, it's unbelievable. A surprise well deserved. More than a dozen military veteran motorcyclists revved their engines before stopping to salute the American hero. I think Joseph and I might be connected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I hope he had a great day. Hey, tomorrow's going to be a lot like today weather wise. Can't roll out a stray thunder shower in the afternoon, but other than that, rain quite hard to come by. That's all our time tonight. Thanks so much for watching. That's right. Good morning, San Antonio. Tomorrow morning, starting at 6. Have a good night.